Hello creators, how are you guys? It's great to hang out with you again for a live stream, a special live stream with me and some friends of mine that I've been getting to know over the over the past eight weeks or so. Actually, 10 weeks, we extended it longer than normal um, due to my daughter's surgeries and things. But um, we're gonna, all of us are here. We've got a lot of great tips for you guys about how to grow your YouTube audience and, and we're gonna learn from each other about what some of these other creators are doing. So they're right here with me. You can't see them yet, but they'll be here in just a second. And we're gonna we're gonna get into this and and learn for a lot from each other and get a lot of inspiration from each other, get new ideas from each other. We're also gonna be answering your questions. So if you have those, you can put those in the chat of this live stream, and it'll be a lot of fun. So for those of you guys, just to give you guys some some context of, of what's going on here, these these creators have just gone through. Uh, eight weeks of video labs, which is eight weeks with me. And we all dug into each other's channels. We got to know each other. We helped each other out. We all reviewed each other's content and strategy and channels and thumbnails and titles and value propositions. And just all everything and went through a lot of training. And so we're just finishing that up. In fact, today's our last day to kind of hang out. And these guys have learned a lot, but I've also learned a lot from them. And I asked them, each of them, to like, what's your best YouTube tip that you think other YouTube creators need to know? Like what's the number one thing that's really helping you grow your YouTube channel, that's really giving you the push, the, the boost that you need? Uh, or some of these people haven't yet started channels or they're about to start a channel and we'll hear from them about the thing that they're planning to do as they get started. So for those of you guys who do have newer channels, those would be great tips. We also have people here who have um, hundreds of thousands of subscribers and we're going to hear from them as well. So there's going to be something here for everyone, regardless of your level, regardless if you have no channel yet or you have millions of subscribers already, there's going to be something here for everyone. So I'm really excited. If you guys want to learn more about Video Labs, there's a link down in the description below this video. You guys can go click on that, go check it out. And the next one starts uh, here on April 3rd, I think. So it's coming up pretty soon. It's already halfway sold out. There's only, I think there's eight spots left or seven spots left, something like that. It's limited to 20 people. So if you'd like to go through this with us, check out that link down there and it'll be fun. And we already have Super Chats coming in. So um, let me introduce you to my friend, Cindy, who's not sure how to handle these when they come in. <laughs> Here's Cindy. We were just talking about this before we got started. Um, so thank you. So Mike uh, Paulus for the $2. And hi, friend. Hope you're having a great day. I am having a great day, especially since we get to hang out now. Thank you so much. And then I don't know what SEK 100, but since it's yellow, I'm thinking that's in the dollar two range or is that the $5 range or $10 range? I should know that, but I don't. But thank you. Um, you're awesome too. Thank you, the beer bringer, for that. So these are my friends. You guys can see them. Everyone wave. Say hi. We've been hanging out for a while and we're really excited to hang out with you guys and share with you some of our, our best YouTube tips. And if you have questions to follow up, you guys who are watching this, definitely comment in the chat and we'll be taking that and we will be digging into those with you guys here together. So let's start at the top. Paul, I'll start with you, man. Why don't you uh, say hi, introduce yourself and your channel. Links to all their channels are down in the, show, in the description, so go check them out. But Paul, tell us a little bit about your channel and then uh, what's your tip that you have for everyone who's hanging out with us here. Hello, everybody on the uh, chat. My name's Paul Shaletto and I run a channel called Curious Droid. As you can see with, oh, get me right way around. There it is. There's, <laughs> there's the name there. Um, yeah, I run a channel which is primarily sort of um, like mini documentaries on space, Cold War history, um, technology, that sort of thing. Um, I'm now up to 355,000 subscribers, um, 65 million, 64 million views. I've actually gained 50,000 subscribers since we started this course. Really? And there was a there was actually a marked increase in the last couple of weeks in applying several of the things which I learned here. Um, I had my highest monthly uh, gain in subscribers. I think it was thirty two thousand subscribers uh, gained uh, in the last thirty days, which is normally around about fifteen to twenty. So there was a definite increase there. Um, so I've learned a lot now. I, I've I've done quite well for myself beforehand. But I didn't know a lot of the reasons as why I did well. And 
what I've learned on this course is the reasons why I did well, but also the reasons how I can optimize on those things. So that has been a, a major, it's all an aha moment, really, uh, where you suddenly think, oh, that's why this happened, or that's why that happened. So having a lot of subscribers and a lot of success to start off, it doesn't necessarily mean that you know what you're doing, <laughs> if you see what I mean. That, that, that's, and now I know much more about what I should be doing and how to go about it. So hopefully the um, acceleration will continue on up from there. Yeah. Um, my major tip uh, is really something which I've learned over the past two years since the channel has been running. And it's been really emphasized from what I've learned um, being on the course. And that is, uh, to tell the story and make it make sure it's an interesting story, but be concise. But if it takes two minutes to tell the story, then take two minutes. If it takes 20 minutes, take 20 minutes. It doesn't matter. My videos are between about 10 and 20 minutes long. And people do watch them right the way through to the end a lot of the time. But what I found is that you must make sure that you make every minute worthwhile because if you start drifting, wandering around and uh, losing people, you will lose people who you will lose subscribers very quickly because they get bored. So make sure whatever you're doing, you make it succinct and to the point and make every second, make every second count effectively because it's you, their time, which they're giving up to watch your channel as much as it is your time to actually make the videos. So you've got to think from their point of view. And if you're looking at a video and thinking, oh, this is getting boring, then that's what's happening. Um, you need to make sure that you keep on track and you do it. Um, and if it means if scripting your thing out, then so be it. But if you can do it live and be very succinct to a point, then that will be one of my main takeaways. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I mean, the common question a lot of people ask is, well, you know, should I, is it better for me to make 10 minute videos or two minute videos? And your answer is whichever Whatever. one you need to do in order to tell the story the best or provide yes. the value the best. And yes, that's consistently yes. hands down. The, that's the it. it, it the, the, this uh, thing where you say, oh, it will only work for two minute videos or 10 minute videos or 20. I know other people who are doing 30, 40 minute videos and they've got hundreds of thousands of subscribers and they get views right away through to the end because people are interested in it and yeah. they're getting the information across there's a lot of information sometimes but they're not repeating themselves yeah so it's 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 keeping it concise and to the point and making sure that people get what they want and then they can move on and they can then come back and they know that what you get and i see this in the comments people say you're you're always concise to the point and easy to listen to easy to watch it's yeah. not difficult yeah that's great cool well thank you for that paul Nice we have a father-son team in here, which I think is awesome. Um, and they have a channel together called um, Rampage. I'll, I'll let them introduce themselves here, but a link to that is down in the chat uh, or in the description as well. And I see you guys in the chat too. We'll be getting to some of your questions. So good questions you guys are asking there. So keep going. Um, but uh, how about Team Rampage? I'll call you Team Rampage, even though that's just kind of not your channel, but once you introduce yourself, tell us about your channel and what your tip is. So my channel, I pretty much do live streams, gaming live streams. I uh, So me and my friends, we just go on to Minecraft servers, play some Minecraft. I'm coming out with some new games. Uh, I'm starting to do map reviews and mod reviews and all that. But I love live streaming. I love hanging out with my audience. I love hanging out with my friends. And the more people I meet, the better. That's awesome. Cool. What's your tip for uh, the YouTube creators? I will let uh, Glennam do that. There you go. Yeah. Cool. So we've been, we've been working on this channel for a while. Uh, it's one of these situations where uh, Rampage came up and said, Hey, Dad, I want to start a YouTube channel. And, uh, you know, we thought, we thought that would be easy. Um, it's not as easy as, as it looks sometimes. I think... The tip that we would have, and this is something that we try to make sure that we do, is you just you got to have fun. If you're not having fun, it's going to come out in the videos. 
uh, it's going to come out just in everything you do and just continue to have fun. Make, make this something you enjoy doing because it is work. It is definitely work. Um, and you're going to want to enjoy doing it. Otherwise you will stop doing it <laughs> and you won't be successful. So go out there, have some fun, make some videos. What would you guys say you, you two enjoy most about this uh, on your channel? About um, making the channel? Yeah. You know, for me, for me, it's a, it's an opportunity to interact with my kid and also to teach the value of work, good, good, good work ethic, because again, uh, YouTube should be spelled Y O R K because um, <laughs> it is work. It's challenging. It's uh, you have to be consistent. You have to be, um, you have to have good attitude all the time. So for, for us, it's, it's a great learning opportunity and, and an opportunity for me to teach some of the, the values that my, my father told me. Yeah. Lane, um, for rat. Good to see you again, Lane. Um, in the chat says love that father, son, father, son bonding time through YouTube and working together as a team. That's awesome. And yeah, yeah sometimes like the main value we get, like, of course he's through growing the channel and things, but the relationships you guys get to build together as you do this as a father, son, that's, that's just so cool. Like you can't Definitely. put a price tag on that, you know, mm -hmm. that's yeah. awesome. Cool. Well, thank you guys. Thanks everyone. Yeah. How about Koa Nature? So don't tell us about your channel and what your tip is. Hey, uh, I'm Koa, the evolutionary biologist of Koa Nature. And through this course, I've actually changed the direction of my channel as I've learned from Tim here that uh, you really need a, a specific direction and a, a niche to fall into. And so now I am going to be teaching and helping re reconnect my fellow millennials with nature so that we can be nature heroic for ourselves and our kids. And so I was really, my channel was really just putting out education videos on fishes and the outdoors. And so now I'm trying to integrate how we can learn, we can use our technology like our cell phones, but at the same time go outside and I'll explore the health benefits of nature uh, how our kids actually learn in nature. And so I'm going through this transition phase and I, this course has been very, very educational and I appreciate all that Tim and this group has uh, offered to me. But my tip right now is uh, be willing to accept the criticism of other people. And it's invaluable because I can work, you know, 60 hours on something and, and be very happy with it. But then I'll, I found that if I just show it to someone else, if it's um, even if it's a friend or your mother or whoever, they will see things that you won't see. And it's probably for the best to, to listen to that advice and make those adjustments. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, no one really likes hearing criticism, especially on something like YouTube where it's like, this is our baby. You know, like we invest in this, we pour so much time, energy and resources. And some of us like would love feedback, but not the, sometimes when the feedback's just like critical, you're like, oh, you know, like, ah, oh, <laughs> like it hurts. So um, I think it takes a sense of humility and I know all you yeah. guys have that, but um, you do too. So yeah, that's important. So cool. Thank you for that. Yep. Welcome. Jess Creatives, hello. Tell us about your channel and your tip. Hey, so I'm Jess. I run Jess Creatives. That's both my business and my YouTube channel. I make weekly videos about graphic and web design and business for online entrepreneurs. And my biggest tip to share is kind of piggybacking on what Paul said earlier about sharing stories. Don't forget to share your own story uh, because especially if you are someone who makes videos like me with tutorials and that kind of thing, uh, getting people to come back, uh, they that happens once they're interested in you. Um, so don't be afraid to weave in parts of your own story so people get to know you as a person and not just straight tutorials and information. Yeah. <laughs> um, just so they, you know, build a relationship and build that community. 
Yeah. A lot of people miss that. Like they're just all about the what they're doing and which is good, but to get people to start engaging on a more emotional level of not just knowing what you do, but actually like growing the know, like, and trust factors. Like we need to have, we know, need, we need to know something about who you are, your background, your story. And so integrating that is uh, something I, I need to do more often as well. So um, that's, that's very important. Uh, and the rest of you guys, if you want to learn design stuff, you gotta go check out just, just his channels. Cause we're all doing like designing thumbnails or something, <laughs> right? So it's relevant for us as creators. So, and all their channels linked up down there. So you guys who are jumping in the live stream here recently, you can go check out all their channels linked up down below. So great. Thank you, Jess. Fabulous fifties. Hello. Hi. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your channel? Hi. Yeah. And your tip. Okay, I'm Shelley and my channel's Fabulous 50s and it's a channel for fashion, beauty and lifestyle for women over 50. And I started my channel a couple of months before uh, starting with video creators and I've loved doing the course because I've just learnt so much and pretty much step by step everything that tim has taught me to do has kept increasing my subscribers and my watch time so i did the course and it paid off for me because i'm just better at doing what i'm doing through things i didn't know that i didn't know and yeah thank you for to tim for that and all of the team who's helped me uh, with their comments and feedback Cool. Yeah, it's been awesome to see you grow. Thank you. So what's uh, what's your tip for us? Um, my tip would be to do this course and and to follow it. And I think um, probably I saw the most growth when I started doing the playlists and tweaking everything. So using what I already had and then just adding all the little tips that you've taught me to do. I think it's hard to pinpoint what what it was but i think that was one of them yeah yeah the playlists are good because it gets like the goal of the playlist is to get someone to watch one video and then another video and then another video and another video where most of the time people think of it more as like the goal is just to organize content and so when you start making it easy for people to watch additional videos with playlists it can really help boost the watch time and the session watch time so and it's working for you so i mean it's a thing that people should try for sure. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you, Shelly. And then we have Cindy. So Cindy has been around the video creators community for a long time. So it's good to hang out with her in the video lab. Tell us about your channel. <laughs> yeah, I'm one of Tim's patrons, which I, you know, wholeheartedly 10 out of 10 recommend. So I'm not I'm paying them to do this. My gosh, <laughs> he's not not paying him to say that, oh. which is true. Actually, I didn't even think yes. of it that way. <laughs> yeah. So um, my name is Cindy Gunter Baldo. I have a channel that is about paper planning, lettering, and art, and it is uncensored. I am watching my language for Tim's channel because I know that this is a family friendly channel. But in in the paper planning community, there isn't always people who are willing to show their mistakes. So I instead have decided to make my channel almost about making the mistakes and learning how to move forward with them and embracing them and realizing that they are part of the process. I make videos five days a week currently, pen reviews, paper planning, bullet journal re uh, videos, planner reviews, random stuff, all the things. There's a lot there if that's what you're interested in. And I will say that, A, since starting Video Labs, uh, I took a look. I have 35,000 subscribers, and about 4,500 of them have come since I started the course in the last eight weeks, which is about 25% higher than my subscriber growth in the last quarter before that. And on top of that, the biggest thing that I learned about analytics specifically is that it's really easy to get lost in the weeds of the analytics, and what you really should do is narrow it down to those things, whether it is um, subscriber to views ratio or any of the other like pieces, audience retention, figure out the couple of things you're looking at that apply to the videos you're making, and then look at them once a month to compare rather than going in every day and looking at every tiny little change rather than kind of going with what Jess said instead of focusing on 
so many of those little details, look at a bigger picture once a month or so, and then put your focus into your content and what is showing is working and what your viewers want to see and they'll keep watching it. Yeah. And that's been working for me. Cool. I didn't realize I, I didn't ask you guys this, um, but like Paul, I didn't realize your channel had grown that much through Video Labs. Cindy, I didn't realize you had. I, I knew Shelly, when she came in, she had like 400, and now she's close to 4,000 in the course of eight weeks, which is awesome. But I should ask for more of these numbers. <laughs> That's so cool. Um, so Julianne S. Cindy said, love Cindy's channel. She is awesome, always interesting, and keeps it real. She asks her viewers, what we want to see for content. Love her. Lots of heart emojis. So yes, some fans. People love you here. So cool. Thank you, Cindy. Um, Gary. Hey, man. Tell us about your channel hey and what guys. you're doing. Yeah. So my name is Gary and my channel and my business is called Funnel Junkies. And uh, basically what we do on there is simplify the process of building high converting sales funnels. And if you're not familiar with what a sales funnel is, it's basically, it's like a website, but where your website wouldn't service you in any way. So you can just goes online and it doesn't really make you any money or it doesn't um, bring you any leads, anything like that. A sales funnel is designed to lead someone to a desired action. So whether if that's just to get their email address, whether you want to get someone onto a membership, um, if you want to sell them a product, a sales funnel is able to build that relationship with the person and um, be able to get them on side with that. So um, I'm just getting started with my channel and um, it's been really, really powerful being in Video Labs to, to get that content at the very beginning. Um, and now I've got this ready to go and I've, I've literally just done my first few videos this week. Um, my tip is as a, an internet marketer myself, I kind of came in looking for the different YouTube hacks and how can I like get around the algorithm and all these kind of things. Um, but the thing that Tim has really drilled into us and drilled into me is like the content really is the king behind everything and it trumps everything. Uh, and it's something I've found powerful that he's said as well is the difference between your discoverable content and your community-based content and having a, a match for both of those. So when I'm now going and like creating ideas for my new videos, I'm thinking like, where does this video fit in? Um, and is this something that I'm doing to build relationship with my existing people? Um, or is it something to, to get discovered and bring in new subscribers to the channel? So uh, yeah, really powerful stuff. Yeah, because a lot of uh, creators, they just they want to make every video they do, they want it to go big, get lots of views. They want it to get a lot of comments, get a lot of subscribers, get a lot of watch time. They want it to go big on Reddit. They want it to, you know, do all these things. And to your point, like with, with Funnel Junkies, you know, like every page on your website, to your example, is serves a different purpose. Like, so the about page is different than the home page, is different than a product page. You know, they're all designed to accomplish a thing like one specific thing. And that's really important what you said, like having goals for our videos. So this one's intended to be discoverable. So I'm going to craft it intentionally with that singular goal in mind, or this one's supposed to be this community and that's to engage my audience, you know, those types of things. So that's cool, man. Looking forward to seeing how you do that on your channel. Uh, I mean, funnels are something that's important to me and the rest of you guys, like if you have like a business surrounding, I, I saw some people in the chat were asking about, uh, lead conversions and things from YouTube. So I think that's exactly the type of thing that uh, you're going to learn from uh, Gary at fun at uh, yeah, subscribe. Funnel so cool. Kristen. Hello. Hello. Hi. Tell us about your channel and what you do. <laughs> well, I'm a uh, Kristen at good Knit kisses and I am here to, uh, I'm in the yarn crafting community, like needle, uh, needle arts is what it's generically called, but, um, I love to teach how to knit and to, well, here we go. Knit, we'll give you some giant needles and a giant crochet hook and loom knitting because I have to give it to you because people are like, what's loom knitting? It's knitting on one of these things or like all kinds of variety of sizes. I, I don't know, I have a couple of hundred of them. I don't even, I don't even count. I'll get guilt. Um, <laughs> but um, I help, help you um, learn to uh, love those stitches and stitch them love into the uh, into your projects and uh, elevate uh, your your crafting level and it came from a, a pain point of me after like my third kid postpartum depression it was just really awful and I got into crafting crafting and it, just, it really helped my depression actually 
And then I got into helping others because I was so excited about it. And so I'm here to help you with your crafting goals. So uh, my tip would be um, about, um, well, oh, by the way, I, whoops, I forgot to tell you, I, I come out with three uh, videos three times a week and I do the stitch alongs techniques and tip tutorials. And um, I have about 182,000 subscribers, I think, and uh, 27 or so million views. So that's kind of where I am. Um, but uh, yeah, my tip would be really, um, as my channel does, is to niche down as much as possible and um, keep variations close to that. So like, yes, I'm yarn and I'm needlepoint, but I go down like way down to just like three things. And even those things, I try and keep them very much related. Um, uh, you know, if someone's like into loom knitting, they might be into needle knitting or someone who's needle knitting can't knit on needles anymore because maybe their hands hurt. So now they're going to loom knitting. So they're like very similarly related. And um, anyway, so just niching down uh, as far as po much as possible. And then for anyone who's doing crafting how-to videos, I know you don't get all this on Tim's channel all that much, but um, work with the equipment that you have, work with the natural light that you have. If you're just starting off, don't go expensive and get all this expensive equipment. I have lighting and some stuff now, but when I started, I started with like a modified tripod and a cantilevered wooden spoon for my kitchen and my phone. And I, I was sitting in my nursing chair over my, the ottoman there and just crafting tutorials. And I was looking through my viewfinder and my phone and that's how I started. So you can do it no matter where you are. That's great. Yeah. So encouraging because a lot of people look at the creators who are like killing it on YouTube and they're like, oh, I need all this fancy gear and equipment and lighting and I spend all this money. There's no way I could. And to your point, I started off um, this this channel, Video Creators, just doing it on not this phone, but a lesser iPhone, <laughs> you know, and that's how, we, that's how I started this one. So. Yeah, just think of like the content value more than the production value. That's what, that's yeah, what should be I still work with my my phone. I I started on a three S and now I'm on a six S plus for a hundred some hundred thirty thousand subscribers, right? Yeah, yeah, and I actually edit now on my phone in iMovie. There you go, perfect. Yeah. So that's great. Well, thank you for that encouragement, Kristen. Um, you guys want to check out her channel? Link to it is down below as well. And then we have Rabbi John Carrier. Not to be confused with the pigeon carrier? Is that a thing you hear a lot? <laughs> the carrier pigeon? Yeah. Uh, not as much as air conditioning, especially in the summertime. Oh, no so relation. Much. I still have to work for a living. Uh, <laughs> Tim, thank you so much for putting this forum together. So a little bit about my channel. It's called Rabbi John Carrier, just like my name plus my title. And um, so I've been a rabbi for about four years now. I'm in a community here in Burbank, California. And uh, the arc of it is my first like weekend service in my new community i gave a sermon we had small turnout i got had 10 people there um and then the next day i recorded the same sermon using my my laptop webcam and put it out over youtube and and seven times as many people saw it and so i started to catch this bug for youtube and now my channel has been going for about three and a half years about 850 subscribers about sixty thousand views and it's uh um what it's really about is reaching out to people who are looking for something, um, who are seeking a life of meaning, joy, greater human connection, personal growth. A lot of times that conversation starts with a question like, I got invited to a bar mitzvah or, and I don't know what to expect. Or I, um, uh, is, I'm not Jewish. Is it okay if I visit a synagogue? And so I, I answer a lot of my videos sort of answer those small questions which then lead to deeper relationships with the people who then connect with me. Um, because what I'm really after is helping people grow and changing lives. And the learning that I've done from Tim throughout the last year or so, and especially in video creators, has really contributed to that. So I'll say my biggest tip is, uh, and this is something I, I heard uh, really click for me for the first time in this video creator session, is um, optimize for people, not numbers. You know, I spent a lot of time in analytics trying to tweak this, tweak that. Um, but what it's really down to is what kind of create, what kind of relationship can you create with the viewer, whether that's a relationship that you want to entertain them, teach them something, help them solve some sort of problem. Um, one of my teachers said to me recently, uh, people don't know, people don't care what you know until they know that you care. 
and uh, to to draft off uh, some of the uh, to Jess's point is you got to tell your story. You've got to be real. Um, you got to be authentic. People are attracted to that, but then you need to not just about your why, but figure out their why as well. And if you do that, you can engage some long-term followers, really build relationships with people that can lay the groundwork for changing lives. And so I want to say uh, big props to Tim, big gratitude for everybody who's been in this community and supported me uh, this way. So thank you, everybody. Yeah, that's so important that we, you're welcome, by the way, but yeah, that like we focus on the human element, not just the algorithm element because the algorithm is designed to surface the content that people respond well to you know so focusing on the human element makes the videos perform better than making sure you got every single little tag in there and every single keyword crammed into your titles and descriptions and things like that which kind of tend to detract from the human element you know of that so that's really good Thank you guys. So we have um, a lot of questions from you guys who are watching the live stream in the chat and we want to go through some of them. And so if you've otherwise feel free to um, post them in the chat. I want to kind of jump into some of those here. So uh, I want everyone here who's on this call, not everyone, but like all of us here who are hanging out with you guys live, like it's not going to be just me answering. I want to, I want these people to help answer some of these questions. And the first one I want to do is from Arpita's Space. I think he's how you say it. It says, 4,000 hours watch time seems too unrealistic to achieve. Despite watching many videos, hope to reach 4,000 hours. I don't feel confident if I would be able to reach here or not. Please help. So what I thought we would do, those of you guys who are, you know, um, gone through video labs and hearing it out, what advice would you give to that person um, just go ahead and start talking you know, on the reader hand or anything. Just what, what would you say to that person? Um, I would at, say right off the bat that something that has worked for me and I have heard worked for other people is to create content in series. So when you're making videos, don't just make random one off videos. Think about like a five video arc, a six or seven video arc where people, when they watch one video, are going to want to keep watching. So maybe instead of making a 20 minute video, make four five minute videos that go together, kind of like how you want to watch a TV show as it keeps going. And that's one way to help continue to bring people back to your channel rather than having them just see one video and be like, okay, I'm done with this guy and move on. Yeah, that's good. Anyone else? else? Um, I would say don't lose faith because it just happened um, for me because I, when I started, I was on, oh gosh, a quarter of that and now I've doubled my 4,000 hours um, and it just it just happened because what I found is that YouTube seemed to pick up a couple of my videos and then just put them out there as suggested and that's where I got my growth from so it was that one video that got pushed and then people were watching my other videos and and they were liking them so that's how it happened and it just sort of happened. So yeah. keep yeah. going and it, it does happen. Yeah. For people who are in the chat wondering what is those, those things mean, in order to join the YouTube Partner Program now, in order to monetize your content, you need to have a minimum of 4,000 hours of watch time in the, um, uh, on your channel as well as for the pa from the past year and you need to have 1,000 YouTube subscribers. So. Um, yeah, like to Shelly's point, when she started video lab, she wasn't at those and now she's way past all of those. So you guys can do it. Uh, I want to encourage you to keep going. The people, and this sounds kind of like a, like I'm a parent right now and you can do a face palm after I say it. It's okay, but it's true, <laughs> which is the people who quit never reach it a hundred percent of the time. Right. So I know like how much work you're putting into this, but I want to encourage you like, um, this isn't about explosive, immediate growth. This is about learning, growing slowly over the long haul. Those are the channels that are the most sustainable long term and have the least amount of volatility in terms of their audience and viewership and things like that. So you can do it. Just uh, was it the water boy. You can do it. <laughs> Just keep going. I don't know if I should quote that movie or not. Um, OK, so this is a good question. I think mostly for Glennon from Chicken Wire. 
Can you ask the dad how he protects his son from trolls? So on your channel, sure, Rampage. Certainly. Yeah. So we, uh, I'm very, very involved. <laughs> so and so we had a, a good community of people around us. Uh, I was involved in every single video and watching and participating in live streams. Um, you know, I think the key is just to be involved. Um, after that, we, we've got some friends now who are very protective of uh, Rampage and, and the actual channel. And so they participate as moderators or, or um, people actually on the, playing the games with him. And, you know, the community gets involved because they, the community now knows what the standard is and they want to keep it that way. So, uh, but, you know, it, it, it's staying involved. Yeah. That's, that's the key, I think. Cool. Can, I, can I piggyback on that really yeah. quick? So my children are middle schoolers and they, I share custody. So they're at their dads. And the last time I went live, they were at their dads and both of them popped into the live stream into the comments. And at first I didn't know what to do, but my community basically rallied around them and they actually took the comment section and turned it into a bunch of bad puns because I don't like bad puns and they were all ganging up on me. But the point being kind of to Glennon's point is that my community embraced my kids and protect were there to jump in if anybody was going to come at them in the chat. So it is, I think, building, it's not just about the person on screen, it's about the people engaging and becoming drawn to it, I yeah. guess. I'll be, now I'm self-conscious about making bad puns. <laughs> but, uh, no, that's good, thank you guys. Um, I think this one's for you, Jess, primarily. Uh, Pammy Plus Parks asked, what is a good guideline for how much personal story to share? You know, if you talk about sharing your story, how, what, what are some guidelines you would give? Uh, I mean, I think that's really a personal choice because it's kind of like how much do you want people to know about you? Some people are a lot more open than others. I mean, I wouldn't go as far to like share where you live. <laughs> um, but I mean, just the other day, my husband was asking me like, what do people on YouTube know about you? And I really, that was part of why I realized like I need to share more of my story because literally the only thing people know about me on YouTube is that I have a dog and a husband <laughs> and that's about it. Um, so they didn't know, you know, my history of my business or things like that. So um, I think as much as it's relevant to your content and as much as you are comfortable sharing. Yeah. Good John. Yeah. I'll jump. I'll add to that because I think I want to key on that word relevant. Um, I mean, you can share what you can share, however it helps your audience trust you. But I think the more you can, what you definitely should include, is those things which kind of give story to why you're doing what you're doing. It's all, I go back to Simon Sinek, all about the why. Like I, I teach how I teach and the audience I teach to because of my story and where I'm coming from, right? And the people who've helped me along the way. And sometimes I'll tell those stories and say, that's my why is because people help me. So I'm now, I'm here to help other people and I'm paying it forward, yeah. right? So I think, you know, you can dig back in the past. Oh, I had a car accident da, 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 or whatever it was, um, you know, share that arc with people so that people know that you're you're serious, like you're doing it for a reason. You know, Superman is who Superman is because Krypton blew up. Right? <laughs> and, and that informs how he conducts himself in the world. And the more you give that origin story. But you don't need to know what like the Superman family had for breakfast uh, that day. <laughs> um, but I think I think Jess is right on. Yeah. So it, that's exactly how I think of it too, which is when I tell my story, um, I want to tell the story of the, of the story that my audience would connect to, which mm -hmm. is, um, uh, like, so for me, I, I tell people like, you probably don't care about like my homeschooling story. I was homeschooled kindergarten through 12th grade, you know? So that's my, that's, I start my story in March 2nd, 2006, I uploaded my first video to YouTube. 
right? right? That's the story I start telling. And I did it primarily, started making videos with, this, with my girlfriend when I was in graduate school as a way of introducing her to my family halfway across the country. And then other people started watching and it creeped me out because that was my MySpace days where like you didn't use your real names on the internet and if people found out where you lived, they would come kill you or something, like, right? So I was getting freaked out. Like, why are people watching these videos? Where are they coming from? And that started me on my journey to YouTube today. So that's like my sto- backstory that I tell. There's more that goes into it, of course, but as opposed to starting like just random facts about yourself, right? It's the story that like if you guys as video creators, YouTube creators, that's the story that relates to you and helps you understand my backstory to where we're at now here at Video Creators a little bit. So any other input on that? Okay, cool. Let's, um, the joke laboratory. That sounds like a fun channel. I didn't even check it out. The joke laboratory asks, do all the channel owners here make a point of reacting with others? I'm thinking interacting with other similar channels in their niche. If so, what are the benefits? How many of you guys here are interacting with other channels in your niche in your, okay, go ahead, Cindy. Um, and Kristen and Shelly and any of the rest of you guys. Um, what does that look like for you? And what are the benefits? Well, I actually have met several other creators in my niche in person at conferences that have to do with paper planning, which there are conferences like that. There are. And I've met them in person. I talk to people behind the scenes. I try not to, I try, I personally try not to overload myself watching lots and lots of videos in the same niche that I'm in. I watch some to keep the pulse and to support the creators I love. But I actually, and this is something, again, I picked up from this course, really try to watch other niches more than that because it brings something fresh. But also I don't find myself copying exactly what other people are doing. Even if it's not on purpose, sometimes you got to be careful when you submerge yourself in other stuff just like you that you start to mimic that and you want to keep your own voice so yeah. i think that's an important thing that i try to do that's good yeah. um shelly you raised your hand too what does that look like for you yeah uh yeah well i um lo- um comment and watch a lot of women in the mature community and mainly it's because i like hanging out with them and they're just really good people that I would enjoy spending time with. So that's, yeah, I, I do that and, and I have um, lots of interaction with those women. But also, Tim, you taught us to go way outside of that scope and look at channels that we wouldn't ordinarily look at. And I think that's been a benefit too because it just opens your mind to um just different ideas and and it kind of makes you a bit more creative so yeah. i remember assigning you guys some channels to watch and all the comments in our private facebook group were like i hate this channel why are you making me watch it some of you're like i wish i could pluck the eyeballs out of my head it, but yes sometimes those channels are worth watching too you know and you can learn yeah, a lot it was a good exercise yeah yeah, yeah. um Go ahead, Rampage. You, you want to add to that? I see your hand going up. I do it pretty much as a new way to make friends and build a, a relationship with people and maybe even sometimes meet them in person. Yeah. So, Because I, I love making friends. I, I love building relationships. So I just like finding new ways of doing that. You know, that's you're exactly right. That's the that's the reason I wish most people would do it. Like a lot of people want to like interact on other, like, Hey, if I comment and I get this on my channel and other channels I'm part of too, people are like, if I comment here, hopefully I'll get it pinned or I get it top comment or something. And people will come over and see my channel. And it's more like about, Hey, Kate, come check out my channel sub for sub. And instead of offering value to the community. Right. And so what you're saying rampage is exactly right. It's about connecting, meeting people, and building those relationships and those that always pays off far better in the long run so go ahead Kristen yeah um I I do that um I don't do it as often as I should I I try and um just because we get busy in our own stuff right um but uh every once in a while when I go and pop in if I see something I really like I go ahead and send them just an encouraging comment um I'm not trying to lead anybody to my channel but this thing that we do kind of makes us feel alone, right? Like after you're just pouring all your heart and soul into this, um, just go leave a great comment on someone's channel, something that you love. 
um, whether they do exactly what you do or they don't, because um, it makes them feel really good. If people see that, they might come over. But I, I think it's really great to just encourage someone else. But I do uh, do connect with other people in my niche. Um, I had never gone to another conference until just um, a month and a half ago. Finally got to go and meet up with other people who do what I do. And it was just the most amazing experience. So uh, I think I'm going to make that a yearly thing <laughs> for sure. I'm probably going to start adding in some more. I used to think I can't afford to go there. But some of the stuff that I was able to do, I'm like, I don't think I can afford not to. You can have control or growth, but you can't have both. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the relationships are the best part of this. And I, that's one of the reasons why I go to events and conferences too, is people like, well, they ask them, well, what, how's it going to help my channel? I'm like, well, you'll learn some stuff, but I, I, maybe I shouldn't say this out loud, but when I go to events, I don't even go to the sessions. I just stand in the hallways and shake hands and meet people, introduce myself to people, walk up to someone else who isn't talking to anyone else. Um, in fact, I went to this, my, my first time at VidCon was the second VidCon ever. So the second annual VidCon, it was still meeting in a hotel at that time. And I went, I didn't know anybody. And, um, the first day was, I was like, this is totally not worth my time and money. I paid thousands of dollars to get out there, which is, it's a lot of money. And I was like, if the only way it's going to be valuable for me is if I just grab it by the horns and make it what I need it to be. So I just started walking up to people who weren't talking to anyone, introducing myself. And some of those people are still good friends of mine today that I just randomly talked to at an event. And as have dividends for my channel and career far bigger than just like a one-off collab or getting featured as a comment or something, you know? So absolutely. I like this question for all of us here. Um, Finn Fonte, how did you guys overcome issues such as little time to record videos in your daily schedule or others near you hearing you when you spoke in your videos? Where did you find the time and privacy? So I just shoot it with seven kids in the background, but <laughs> who's more professional than me? <laughs> Go ahead. I just have time. That's awesome. I, I, I just have time. That's great. Most we of my days, I don't actually have to do anything. So. <laughs> I love that. Oh man. The good old well, days. <laughs> I, I, uh, I set a time. I know I'm going to have to pick up my nieces at school at a certain time dropping off. I have like a, a one hour, two hour window where I know I'm going to shoot something. And so I, I make sure that I get whatever I need shot in that time frame. So I have a quiet house. So really you need to set a, a time to start to when you're going to film, just do it then. Yeah. And if you have time, if you have like, if you have a chunk of time, try and set up, and do more than one video at a time. Like squash, batch film as much as you can. That's what I wind up having to do is try and film. Like I'm only going to put makeup on two days a week. So those days I'm going to get as much filmed as I can. There you <laughs> yeah. go. So that, yeah, so I'll have to do it again. But it it you're being at least more productive with your time. And then you can edit later and you can do that with headphones on. Yep. Yeah, I, I would say um, look at your current schedule right now. And I mean, like really look hard at it and kind of write down what you've been doing that you can remember the last few days, to, like kind of see patterns and see where you might have a gap or like, do I really need to be doing that? Probably not, you know, and then just um, like she said, do a few of them um, back to back together at a time. And if it's, it's, if it's just about like how you sound or how you're hearing yourself, if it picks up a little bit of background noise, it's probably less than what you think. Um, you don't have to have like a tomb of silence, a cone of silence, however, um, get in your closet, find a clean spot, or hang a sheet behind you if you have to, and don't be embarrassed. Just kind of just go for it and uh, make a few, listen to a few, cringe at them and put them up anyway for a little bit until you get your, um, your pace. For me, I do mine after the kids are in bed and after my wife's in bed and I do them all pretty much on Sunday, Sunday nights. So it's like, I just try to like do them in batch, crank them out. So I'm not like um, absent every day, you know, throughout the week, but it's just like kind of batching it, get them all done. I too, I don't wear makeup, but the shaving, same thing for me. Like I only like to shave once, maybe twice a week if I have to. And so, uh, same, same type of deal. Yeah. Just get her done. So I do film after the kids are med though. Same for me. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I'm, I'm up at like two and 3am still. Yeah, filming. Exactly. Yeah. 
Uh, I had a my I was uh, two thirty last night, so I am, or this morning I suppose is technically how that goes. Yeah, these are all really good questions, guys. Thank you so much for asking them. Um, there are some questions here about Video Labs. You know, the power of quiet is asking Tim in your course. Will you be covering how to use YouTube as a lead generation platform to draw leads and customers to your business outside of the platform? That is not part of Video Labs. That would be more my course, Turn YouTube into Your Career which is what I recommend for that type of topic. But for Video Labs, this is more about audience development and growing an audience and learning all the principles, whether whether you're just don't even have a channel yet, which there's some people here in this session of Video Labs had no channel at all. The people who um, who have hundreds of thousands and we've had one person with over a million subscribers go through this, not in this session, but a previous session. So it's it's for it's for everybody. And I'm um, just really digging deep into how do audience, how does audience growth work on YouTube? It's the most in-depth course I know of, and I've been through a lot of them. So uh, it's it's uh, it'll hopefully give you exactly what you need to know how to how to grow your channel, how to take it to the next level. And but the most thing, kind of going back to like what Rampage said, and the rest of us were kind of chiming in is like at the end of the day, like I feel like the best thing I get out of this is like relationships and new friends that like now if I need design work, I can go to like Jess and be like, hey, I need some help with this. Or if I need some voiceover work, I'm going straight to Paul because his voice is just awesome. I don't know if you guys noticed that in the beginning, <laughs> you know? Um, if I, you know, like we have, you build like relationships with people. Um, you know, John's publishing a book, so you wanna like publish a book, like you got, you can tap his, his shoulder. Jess also just published a book. You need like sales funnels. I know I can go um, over to Gary. So there's just like the relationships and then the connections help you far better I mean, far, I don't know. I just love that part. So I think that's always like the unexpected thing of the, in each of these is not just the the expertise and not just the training, but it's also the community that you really need to keep going and really reach your goals on YouTube. So um, we have a super chat here. Let's uh, cover this one. Um, Brooklyn Dossi, thank you for the $10. What are some tips for growing a music channel? I know covers are a good way, but then you risk being just another cover artist. Music A&Rs seem to advise against doing covers. Now I'm torn. We actually had a music channel in this session of Video Labs, um, two sisters who do music videos and are up and coming artists. So I wish they were here, but they're not. <laughs> um, I actually, let me do this. I have a video coming up with Peter Hollins, who has almost 2 million subscribers. This is an acapella music channel. And I asked him that exact same question. And it should be up coming in the next two or three weeks, I think, on video creators. So one of the things that he says in that video, though, is that it can't be just about the music. It has to be about you as a brand. Like people, you don't want people just to watch your music and leave. You want them to watch the music, get introduced to you, and then fall in love with you as a creator and to watch more videos from you because I love your story, going back to a lot of the points we made earlier. So at the end of your videos, make sure you're introducing yourself and you're talking about why this, why this music means something to you and the importance it has for you or some sort of part about like what stood out to you in this music or something that people can not just like like you for your voice or your music ability, but also like you as a person and start growing that the the relational equity with you. So um, hope that helps. But yeah, if you guys are interested in joining us, we'd love to have you um, in Video Labs. Next session starts here in about two weeks. So there's um, a link in the description of this of this video here or an interactive card you can click on to go learn more information and just check it out, see if it's right for you or not. We only have a few spots left. So um, if you want one of those final spots, it'd be great to have you. So and definitely check out the other creators here in this live stream. They're awesome. You will learn a ton from them. And one of the best things about being in a community with other creators is you can watch each other grow and learn from each other's successes. And so even though this video labs is ending, a lot of these people are going to keep going on together uh, as a group, which is awesome and continue to support and, and grow together. And uh, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what these people do in the future. And I think you should check them out as well. So thank you guys for going through Video Labs. And those of you guys who are in the chat, thank you for hanging out with us. It's been fun to get to know some of you and answer some of your questions as well. And uh, we will see you guys tomorrow for a video on how to, um, the difference that monetizing your videos makes in search and discovery. 
So do you need to have them monetized or not? Does YouTube favor content that's monetized versus not monetized? So that's what we're talking about tomorrow. So subscribe if, you're, if this is your first time here, and we'll see you guys then. Thanks for hanging out. Bye.